What's up, basketball coaches, players, and fans? Welcome to the Pass First podcast, where we share our knowledge of the game. My name is Alex Engel, and I'm here with my partner, Augie Johnston. We hope you're able to take something away from today's episode that'll help you on your basketball journey. Today, we're going to be talking about single sport versus multi-sport athletes and some of the controversy that's come along in the last 10 or 15 years in regards to that topic. If you've been enjoying these episodes and listening to us on Spotify, on iTunes, or watching on YouTube, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, which will be right here on the bottom of the screen. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into today's episode. All right, welcome in, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us. Good to be back here with Augie again. Uh, we'll, today, like we said earlier, we're going to be talking about single sport versus multi-sport athletes. Um, and so to kind of start this off, talk a little bit about our own experiences. So Augie, I'm going to ask you, what sports did you grow up playing? Yeah, I grew up playing pretty much, well, I guess not all sports because there's so many. But, um, you know, my main ones were soccer, football, basketball. And then I tried a little bit of baseball. It was like T-ball. Um, but yeah, like growing up, it was all about soccer for me until I got to about, mm, I don't know, maybe fourth or fifth grade. Then it started becoming basketball and soccer. And then around sixth grade, I started playing football as well. And at that point, sixth, seventh, eighth, I was um, playing all sports. Eventually, I stopped playing soccer. And then uh, in high school, I played just uh, basketball and football my freshman year and my sophomore year basketball and football and then my uh junior year i just played basketball my junior and senior year okay so you kind of it almost sounds like you picked up more sports as you got a little older and then obviously tailed off when you got into high school but like you picked up a couple extra sports by the time you're already almost in middle school right fifth sixth grade yeah i mean the thing with football right is you, you don't play football in like fourth grade and stuff so i was playing basketball starting actually third grade I, you know i started playing basketball but soccer was my thing um you know i was doing club soccer you know and all that kind of that whole life okay so for me i mean i don't want to say it was the opposite but it was a little different where i had i started playing a ton of sports and then by the time i got to high school i like whittled them down so the first sport i ever started playing was actually hockey they had roller hockey so i was playing that um basketball i think i started both of those around the same time soccer baseball um and then eventually football as well so i i I ended up, you know, hockey only lasted a very short amount of time, but the other four, um, you know, basketball, soccer, football, and baseball, I played those four between, you know, first grade all the way to eighth grade. Um, and football and soccer are the same season. So I had to switch like one year I would play football and one year I'd play soccer. I kind of went back and forth. Um, but then by the time I got to high school, I played baseball my freshman year. I stopped playing soccer because it was the same time as basketball. I stopped playing football. I played baseball and I played basketball my freshman year. And then from then on, I just played basketball sophomore year through senior year. Um, and I kind of, you know, that's when I really started to kind of specialize and focus in on that one sport. Um, now, with, with that being said, do you feel like the dynamic of single and multi-sport athletes has changed in the last, you know, 20, 30 years? Or do you think it's kind of the same as it was when we were going to school and growing up? Uh, I think it's, a, I think it's changed. Yeah, I think it's different. I think um, more players are playing one single sport year round. And uh, the multi sport thing, I, you know, you can see at the younger ages, when you go and there's to a club tournament or something, and there's tons of youth, youth teams out there, um, just playing one sport. Yeah, and I, I know, definitely, I would, I agree with you that it's changed The the dynamic has definitely changed. And I can just talk about like here locally and without even looking outside of this area, but just looking at here locally where, you know, there's just in this county, five, six different club programs, you know, whether some of them are smaller mom and pop, some of them are like actual programs with multiple teams. Um, but that was not a thing. Like when I was a kid, there was one or two other club programs and they were like one team, you know, it was like a team of kids that there was a dad or somebody got them together and they all played together and they grew up together playing. Um, and now you've, and that was it, you know, and I played on a club team with a couple with, uh, kids in my area, but again, it wasn't like a program. It wasn't like they had like sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, you know, fourth, fifth high school. It was just like, Oh, one group. And that was it. And now you've got like multiple programs. Um, same thing. If you, you know, looking outside of this area, you look at like AAU, there are so many AAU teams. If you go to like bigger tournaments, so many different divisions now, I mean, 
I, I, again, I'm not like an AAU expert, but I, I know from the people that I've talked to that it used to be like you had maybe an upper division and a lower division at most. A lot of times it was just one division in AAU. And now you've got like platinum, gold, silver, bronze. Like, you know, there's like four or five divisions at all these tournaments because there's so many teams now that are playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, that's what I'm saying about that. The youth tournaments, there's so many. They're so big. They're huge. Um, and also one thing I think that from my observation is – has changed a little bit is is and you mentioned it with the club basketball programs and stuff is when I was growing up there was it didn't seem like there was even club basketball like I was doing like I said club soccer like that was a thing I feel like that's been pretty a common thing maybe it's just our area I don't know but all of a sudden we were like and I played club basketball but it was later you know we it was maybe seventh grade we started doing that um and and nowadays, yeah, like, like you said, there's just so much opportunities. And, you know, don't get me wrong. It's, it's a good thing we have our own club program that we run, you know. And um, but I think what we do well is we make it so that, you know, it's not like five days a week with every single weekend. You have tournaments, you know, with us, it's it's, it's pretty, you know, more smaller commitments two days a week, you know, maybe three if we need it. And we do. Um, and a lot of our players actually you know play baseball while they're doing this or um anyways but yeah it's definitely um part of the reason i think that there's more one sport athletes mm -hmm. and i think we talked about this a little bit before that there's also more of an emphasis on like training too you know like having a trainer hiring a trainer working with somebody um, again it's not to say that none of this stuff existed before i don't want to make it seem like oh this is some newfound thing club programs and training like that's been around for a long time but it's just blown up in, in at such a level compared to what it used to be. And we'll get into a little bit more about why that may have happened or what's going on with that. Um, but with that being said, what would you say are some of the benefits of being a multi-sport athlete? Yeah, I think there's a lot of um, crossover skills that you can develop. Uh, like, for example, I, I you know, attribute a lot of my good footwork maybe in basketball to soccer. Like immediately think about it as, as a kid in soccer, you're now like having to connect your brain to your feet in a really, you know, important way. So, so you know, like, and also spacing in soccer, I feel like if you can understand spacing in soccer, then the spacing in basketball makes a lot of sense. The passing angles, you know, give and go in soccer, give and go in basketball. Um, and just other, like, so I'm, I'm giving the, the soccer examples, the other crossover skills, like if you go with football, right, your physicality, not afraid to you know take a charge in basketball you're not afraid to hit on the football field you get that from football um in speed you know in football you're running sprints you're trying to get faster or track right you're a multi-sport athlete doing high jump um so those are the crossover skills examples yeah one i think to me one of the main ones is that the more sports you play especially I mean, track is a little different because I guess unless you're a thrower, you're not using a ball. But a lot of the ball sports, so baseball, football, you know, soccer, basketball, the more you're using different types of, uh, of balls and like, you know, kicking, throwing like a football, throwing a baseball, where they're different movements, but they all are related to hand-eye coordination and just being coordinated in general. I think that's where one of the main benefits from being a multi-sport athlete comes from. Um, you know, it's obviously some of those other things translate to, like you said, if you're working to get faster, you might be faster on the court. But I just think the more different things you're throwing and catching all the time, your hand eye coordination goes way up. And I think that's a huge benefit and a really underrated athletic ability is just being really coordinated, like being able to catch a pass anywhere, being able to make a pass anywhere, being able to, it helps with shooting, it helps with dribbling, it helps with, like you said, footwork, just everything that you're doing. Um, and so I think the more that you can do that, the the more it's going to help you on a basketball court. And I know for, I feel like for myself, it helped me a lot where, you know, cause you don't know, you know, if you're going to be big, small, really how about, you know, great leaping ability or not so much, but I feel like you can control your hand eye coordination because it's just using your hands a lot really. And just getting used to that. Um, so that's definitely another uh, benefit of it. And then obviously you hit on a lot of the other stuff. It makes you more well-rounded of an athlete. Um, you're just used to so many different movements, you know, uh, you get to do a lot more stuff than just, okay, I'm on the court and I do these things. I think a lot of times those multi-sport athletes, they can do multiple things on the court instead of just being like, Oh, I'm just a shooter or oh, I'm just this. Like they can do a, 
I don't want to say it makes them more uh, a better skilled player, but it just makes them better athletically. You know, they move around better on the court. Yeah. And I think it also helps their IQ to like learning uh, all these different sports. Um, yeah. Just your ability to like pick up plays. You're constantly having to learn new plays, right. For every new sport, stuff like that. Um, you know, there's also the benefit too of, of not, you know, not knowing what you're going to be best at, you know, you might, you know, I see it all the time, like, um, with really good basketball players, if they also play football, like they might get to their junior year and think they were a basketball player. And then all of a sudden go play football in college because, you know, that's what ended, ended up being kind of their money maker, you know? So there's the benefit of that too, but, um, obviously those are pretty rare type athletes, but yeah. Yeah. And I, one last thing that just popped into my head while you were talking about that, which probably is one of the first, most important parts and first things is I think it guards against burnout too. I think mm -hmm. playing multi-sports really helps protect against burnout of one sport. I mean, yeah, I guess you could just burn out on doing athletics in general, but that's usually not common. Usually burnout is from doing the same type of sport over and over and over again. So I think, yeah, switching it up and you have four or five months out of the year, you're doing this and the other six, seven months, let's say you're doing something else. Um, it keeps things fresh. It keeps things new. And burnout is, is really a major problem that I, I do see with a lot of kids where, um, you know, we were talking about it earlier that all of a sudden the kid's one of the best players in his class. And then they take some time off and they're like, huh, you know what? I, I really didn't like playing basketball that much because I did it so often I got burned out on it and now I don't want to play anymore, you know, or I was pressured so much by my parents to do it or, or whatever. Um, and it's just not fun. And so if it's not fun, you're not going to play. Yeah. Now, and with all this said too, um, you got to keep in mind that you do need to put in work in all your sports, you know, like there's a, there's a new challenge that presents itself and, um, you just got to make sure, you know, I guess for, for me, my opinion on that is like some sports are a little bit more skilled. You might need to spend a little bit more time. If you play baseball, like you can't just show up and it's the same with basketball too you, for some players, unless you're a really good athlete you can't just show up and you, you know, you gotta, you gotta get out there and throw. And um, yeah. Also one, one last final thing I would say about the multi-sport thing is burnout, but also injuries. I heard this argument somewhere that uh, single sport athletes, right. You're doing the same repetitive thing over and over again for, you know, eight years straight with no, not changing it up that you could, that could lead to injuries in the long term. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't know much about that, but I could see where you're going with that. So yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay. So let's look then on the flip side. What about for single sport athletes? What are some of the benefits of that? Yeah. So I, I kind of touched on, I knew I kind of jumped the gun on there, but yeah, like, um, you know, you can really focus on the skill set that that's required for that sport. So, um, if, if you know, are undersized or you, something like that, like you have maybe, I don't want to say no chance, but doesn't, you know, your, your odds are against you in that sport. Well, if you specialize in it, you might be able to get your skill set up to par to where you can compete in that sport. Um, so I would say that could be a plus. Oh yeah, definitely. I think as well, um, just your IQ in the sport. And obviously, I mean, all sports require IQ, probably some even more than others, but I think the more you, if you're going to specialize, then you're playing that all year round, you should be able to develop your IQ um, and increase it quicker than someone who only plays every once in a while, you know, or not every once in a while, but not as often. Um, I also think that, uh, you give yourself the advantage of like, you can play catch up or, or create more of a gap between yourself and other players. If they're off playing some other sport for four months and you're really, like you said, you're really focused in and you're working, that's four months extra time you get to work on that sport and they don't. So you can either, if you're behind, you can catch up potentially, or you can push yourself ahead of someone else. Yeah. I, and, and I think it's all about the balance. I think the at a young age like we talked about earlier you should play all sports and like you should go to like your your baseball practice and then go play in your rec basketball game afterwards and and that should be your youth you know and then you know in the falls here you're playing football maybe you're you know playing a little bit of basketball with your friends here and there or a little bit of baseball um but you know once you get into high school if if you i think freshman year you should play all sports sophomore year but i think there's a balance to to being three sport athletes tough to, you know, if, if you are the type of athlete that can play three sports and, and be good at three sports, then, you know, you should do it, you know, because you could help your school, you could help your, um, 
your chances of, you know, figuring out what you're best at. But at some point, I think there needs to be a balance, maybe just going two sport or um, because three is a lot, man, to be great at three sports. That's tough. Yeah, it takes away a lot out out of uh, of your off-season training time. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, if there was time to play all three and then have off-season training for all three, I think probably nobody would have a problem with it. But there's just that's just not how it works. You know, they eat up so much of the year. So, um, yeah. And any other last things on single sport athletes that you can think of? No, no, I think we covered it. Okay. Um, so let's talk about a little bit of why this transition has happened is why, you know, why single sport athletes are more common. Um, one thing that that's popped into my mind is that obviously with the invention of, of, well, not recent, but somewhat recent invention of the internet, um, last 20, 30 years, you know, that, that, uh, the ability now to have a phone in your hand and you're always seeing, you know, a video of someone training or some video on ESPN or ball is life or whatever it is about some guy working out or doing this and the other. So do you think that like social media um, and then, you know, just other media outlets in general have kind of pressured kids into thinking that they have to play one sport and they got to pick that up at a young age and like, that's it. And they got to grind that out for like 10, 12 years if they want to reach their goals. Yeah, I think so a little bit. I think what happened was, you know, it was basketball, especially, and I think all sports, but I, I can speak specifically for basketball. There's this grind culture. Like you got to grind, you got to grind. And growing up, it was kind of like, at, for, for us as kids, it was like, I'm self-motivated. I want to play basketball. Like I'm influencing myself, you know, like I want to get better. Yes, I'm, I am grinding. I'm in this work. I'm, I'm working hard and stuff, but it wasn't like, I didn't have a phone in front of me that was tell you know showing me you know hey you got to grind you know like we said the trainers all this new culture of 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 putting in work basically um that's kind of new and i think that came along with social media and it promoted that and so i think that in turn made kids you know feel like no i just want to play basketball or i just want to play whatever sport they're playing um and influence that single sport but I don't think it was, it's not blatantly. I don't think I've even said, seen on social media, you know, really the talk of you have to, about being a single sport athlete or anything. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, you don't think it's like direct that people are saying you have to just play this one sport. Um, and there's even some talk and kind of one of the reasons we I put this question on here is because there's been, I've seen the opposite where like coaches on Twitter or, or just people on, you know, people in the basketball world on Twitter or, or other social media outlets are like, hey, like, you know, you guys are kind of getting tricked into thinking that you have to just play this one sport your whole life. Like a lot of the, a lot of college coaches actually like multi-sport athletes because they can do more things, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and that you got to get out of this mindset of like, Oh, I just play one sport and that's it. Um, and so, you know, I, that's kind of where it's, it's not like it's only one direction, but I think it's almost like subconsciously because that stuff is put out there more, more pressure is put on to like working hard. Like you said, that grind culture, and so even if they're not intentionally doing it, it's creating that type of an, uh, of an idea in most people of like, oh, no, that's how I have to be. I have to do only this, you know, otherwise I won't make it. Like if I don't, if I'm not working out all this time, I won't make it. And, and that's, I think, where that fear of burnout, one, and two, um, like you said, injury, like, you know, re rest and recovery is just as important as working hard. It's like, there's like a fine line, you know, like if you don't work out hard enough, you won't reach your goals. But if you work out too hard, you won't reach your goals either because you'll get injured, you know, and I've seen guys that came in with like a bunch of hype at a high school and then they got into college and they got injured their whole career. And like, they barely ever got to play because they were just constantly battering it, battling injury. So it's like a really small area. Like the, the sweet spot is kind of like a small area between those two. Um, but I, yeah, I, I do. I agree with you that I think social media is pressuring people that direction. And I mean, whether it's, on purpose or not it's probably not some guy you know there's no some like secret guy up there with like his strings trying to pull strings to get kids to work out harder but just as a culture that's what it's become now i think yeah and so it's it's because of also too like we talked about this in, in past episodes people when we grew up there wasn't a lot of trainers right we like if like if you wanted to get better at basketball and like work on your skills like that was on you kind of like, like I said, self-discipline, I want to get good at basketball. I'm going to go out there and shoot shots um, or, you know, like parents and, and other uh, coaches, you know, rec coaches, there was people doing it. That's for sure. Cause I, you know, somebody did it for me, but um, nowadays it's like, you know, we can, you can get really good working with a trainer and, and um, yeah, that's also helped 
you know, promote, I think, single sport. Yeah. And I, I would just say one last thing here is like, you know, with the club and the training stuff, I do think there are times where there's too much emphasis put onto that. Um, and, you know, I know we run clubs up. I know we both train kids. So I know it may sound counterintuitive, but I do think sometimes it's it, people put too much stock into that. Like they got to go find this, you know, what they think is some elite club team, pay a bunch of money to have their kid travel to some tournaments. And, you know, maybe the kid doesn't even play or you have like the multi-level one, one thing that I've heard a lot lately is like teams will have multi-levels and they'll have like the third and fourth level kids are all paying money, a lot of money to go play at these tournaments, but no coaches are watching them and nobody like cares, you know, like as far as recruiting wise, and they think they're all getting recruited, but they're really just paying the money. So that like the top teams, kids all get scholarship. And like, those are the kids that actually are getting looked at. So you've got like a program that's got like five levels, you know, like they've got like five 17 U teams, but really only the one or maybe the second best are the ones that actually have college kids. And the other three levels, like have kids that can't play at that level, but they're shelling out a ton of money because they think they're going to get seen. And then really they're just paying for the top level kids to get scholarship because those kids don't pay anything. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. So, well, that's, that's, you know, it's kind of what it is because everybody thinks they have to play AAU. They got to play for some big name AAU team in order to, to get better, you know, and, and sometimes it's, it's fool's gold, I think. Yeah. I think my, my whole stance on that stuff is like, if you are a player that is, you know, has the opportunity to go play D1 or, you know, maybe even D2, if you're a good player, then yeah, you know, you might want to like look for a ways to go to, to tournaments and get exposure. Cause like I've seen it firsthand where, you know, especially in a small town where you, you're not going to get a ton of exposure. Sure. Um, doing that. But then, but that's like a diamond in the rough, you know, that's like the one in the 10,000 type players, but um, yeah, everyone else, like, I think you should just use sports as a way to have like really good memories and experiences with, you know, if you're going to do club to like go to Santa Barbara, go to Monterey, go to these nice places, play in a tournament, you know, have fun, you develop your players, get the kids playing together that are going to play high school. So when they do get to high school, they're good. Makes that an amazing experience for them. That's a huge gift you could give your kids. So that's kind of the strategy I think for most, for most people. Yeah. I think for most kids, that is probably the ideal route because most kids are not going to play in college. I mean, the facts are the facts. 1% of all high school student athletes play in college. And that's just a fact. I've seen the statistic before. Um, so 99% are not. And so they need to, if they're going to be playing club, they should be so that, yeah, they still want to get better. You still want them to get improved or to improve, but you don't want to sell this pipe dream of like, oh yeah, you're getting recruited when it's like reality. That's not the case, you know? Um, and I know this, that's a little bit off tangent, but I think that all ties into that single sport athlete culture of like, oh, well, I have to be here. I have to play club all year because I won't get recruited if I don't play club. You know, I think that that's kind of where I was going with that. I, I didn't make that very clear at the beginning, but I think that's kind of ties into it as well. Um, so, OK, uh, so I guess and I'm we've, I, you guys listening or watching and probably kind of know how we feel about this at this point. But what do you think is better, the single or the multi sport athlete? I think multi-sport athletes better. Like we talked about all the reasons. I mean, especially at a young age, like that's kind of like for, for sure, for sure. I think do, being a three-sport athlete in high school, like I just tip my hat to you. And I think you're an incredible athlete if you can pull that off. And, and um, you know, two-sport athletes, great too. One-sport athlete, it's great too. But um, you just got to kind of find what, what works for you. I mean, like I said, my junior, senior year, I was a one-sport athlete. Do I regret not playing football? Yeah, you know, there's definitely regret there. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, I, and I think uh, if I was going to give it like a timeline, I would say when you're young, you should play multiple sports. Kind of like you said, like, you know, maybe you have your one main sport. Like, let's say basketball is your main sport. Maybe you play multi-sports all year round, like different things that every season you're changing. But then you play club. And so, like, you can, you know, because like you said, club's usually asking for a couple days a week. So you might play two days a week where you got a basketball and a soccer practice or something, you know, and you can focus in on whatever you think your favorite sport's going to be. And then once you get to high school, I do think you really need to start not fully specializing, but starting to specialize a little bit. Um, unless, like you said, you're that rare athlete that can play all three sports at a really high level. And I guess what I would say is it depends on what your goals are. If you just want to have a good high school experience and you just want to play and be really, you know, let's say you're good at all three sports and that's it. And that's all you want to have, then that's fine. Just be a three sport athlete and be good. But if you're like, Oh, I want to play in college. And I know that basketball is my main sport. And that's the one that I'm going to get a potentially a scholarship offer, or at least like get looked at by schools. Then you may want to say, okay, I need to just focus on basketball. 
you know, like I said, unless you're just a, a supreme athlete, but for most players, it's like, okay, I could play all three sports and be pretty good in all three, but probably not get looked at. Or I could focus on one or maybe two and then actually get some looks from, you know, whether it's a JC or a D2 or D3 or D1, whatever. Um, and that's the case where I think you got to decide, okay, I need to focus on that route. But that again, like it, it's different for every person, you know, and every high school experience is going to be a little different. So I don't want to say it's one size fits all. I just think you got to look at yourself, what your desires are and be realistic with yourself. Like, am I the type of athlete that can play all three and go get a college, a scholarship either way? Then yeah, do it. But if you know you can't do that and you really should be focusing more on one, then probably focus on that one, you know? But I think you can wait until high school to do that. I think you can can play multiple sports yeah. through yeah. middle school, you know, and then just kind of go from there. So, um, all right. Well, any last thoughts before we get out of here today? Nope. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, again, the multi-sport versus single sport athlete, I think you could probably ask 10 different people and get 10 different opinions on it. So hopefully we uh, helped clarify some stuff for you. And if you have any thoughts on that, feel free to let us know. Um, but again, thank you guys for watching. Um, we will come out with a new episode once a week. And we hope to see you guys in the next one.